Lawrence Kruwa between 1947 and 1954, after which he attended the Made College of War from 1955 to 1960. The promising disposition of the then young Victor encouraged his father, the very influential, highly celebrated and dignified Saolatele Wola Begi II, to send him to England, where he studied at the Poole College, Poole, Dorset, for his general certificate of education, ordinary and advanced levels. Between 1964 and 1968, Obad Dr. Falagbade David Victor Olagbegi taught thereafter studied law at the prestigious Urban College of Law and Grayson, London, where he obtained a Bachelor of Law degree. He returned to Nigeria to attend the Nigerian Law School for the mandatory one-year study and qualified as barrister at law. He was called to the Nigerian Bar as barrister and solicitor of the Supreme Court of Nigeria in 1968. Oho, as he was fondly called by his students, launched into legal practice in 1969 at the chambers of Frederick, uh, uh, Chief Frederick Harry Williams, SEL, a Tatian in the legal profession and doyen of the Nigerian Bar. After six years of active legal service, his Imperial Majesty joined the Nigerian Law School as a lecturer in 1975, where he worked in retirement in 1999 as a leader and director of administration, secretary to council of legal education. During his career as a tutor in the Nigerian Law School, he took time off for three years to serve as special advisor on legal matters to the then Vice President of Nigeria, His Excellency Chiba Lese Kweme. For a period of 20 years, he served at the Nigerian Law School, by Dr. Kolagbaide David Tolatero Olagbe, taught the legion of lawyers who are to the occupying eminent positions in the bar, the bench, and in politics, including the right honorable speaker, Right on your foot of the Tunja Gara, including myself, including the Honorable Abunta, even the leader of the house, Dr. Bajabia Mila, right on your foot of these are visions of his students. His Imperial Majesty was later honored as a life bencher of the body of benchers. On behalf of Life Ajay, Olate Rolabegi, he taught, ascended the throne of his fathers as the Olaf of our kingdom on February 21, 1999 as a four-class of and paramount ruler. Like most great leaders, his ascendancy to the throne was not without challenges. As he was destined to rule, he was officially presented his staff of office by His Excellency, Governor Lucia Guagagu, on 18 December 2003. Over for Lagade, Olatero Olagbegi, he survived by his wife, a royal majesty, Ulu Rijiji Salolade Olatero Olagbegi, a lawyer and law teacher at the Faculty of Law at the Kunlajak University at Kungayakoko, and many children including Princess Jumoke Adelabu, a chief magistrate with the Lagos State Judiciary. Amongst many honors, His Majesty was President of Osborne College Students' Union, the representative of Grace Inn on the Council of Legal Education in the United Kingdom, General Secretary of the Nigerian Association of Law Teachers, President of the Students' Christian Union, Member Nigerian Bar Association, member of the Black Table of Chief R. Williams Chambers, member National Political Reform Congress 2005, member International Society for the Reform of Criminal Law, Chairman of the State Council of Governors, among others. His Imperial Majesty was also honored as International Man of the Year 1997 by the International Biographical Centre, Cambridge, England, the institution which also honored him as the Deputy Director for Africa in 2007. He was honored as one of the international who is who of intellectuals in 1997 too. He served as the Chancellor of the University of Benin in 2004-2007, Chancellor of the University of Abuja 2007-2016, and Chancellor of the University of Jos 2016 till his transition. In recognition of his exemplary leadership and worthy contributions to the development of education, his Imperial Majesty was conferred with honorary doctoral degree of laws, LLD honorary causa. In recognition of his selfless and qualitative service to Nigeria, he was also honored with the revered national honor of the commander of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Kabiyesu was a member of Yoruba Tennis Club. He played lawn tennis, squash racket, and billiards, and was very active in community development activities and farming. He is well traveled and has attended various international conferences in the United Kingdom, Jamaica, Australia, India, among other countries. Or by Dr. Folagbadi, Victor Olatero Olagbegi, taught CFR, lived 
a fulfilled life and impacted on so many lives in and outside of our kingdom before he proceeded to join his ascensors on 17 April 2019 at the, the happily age of 77. I crave the indulgence of the right honorable speaker and this honorable house to observe a mini silence in his honor for the, in honor of this illustrious son and king of our kingdom, a pragmatic Nigerian elder statesman, a lover and practitioner of peace, and a lawyer of high repute who has contributed so much to the legal profession and the country at the same time upholding the rich cultural heritage of Nigeria. I thank you, Professor. Any one who intend to pay tribute to the late revered imperial majesty. Honorable my Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Mayowak Polari. I represent the Deoluji Okeibo Mojibo Federal Constituency. I am from the Sunshine State. Oh, no. I'd like to join my voice to Honorable Ayori uh, this presentation. Oba, the late Olowo, was a bridge builder. He ascended throne when there was crisis in Owo. And based on his uh, sagacity, based on his understanding of his people, there was absolute peace during his reign. He is a man that is diligently upright. A man that is outstanding in performance. He was very outstanding in performance. He died as a man common, commonly regarded and referred to as a great motivator. In fact, he, 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 he made sure there was peace in our world. He was a great man. He died and he died a royal death. And the people of Owo, and the people of Owo, we are going to meet him greatly. We now, uh, on behalf of the multiple of my constituency, I say, I now say, are you coming? Honorable uh, thank you, uh, this, uh, Speaker, my distinguished colleagues. Uh, Simon Arabo is my name. I represent Confederate Constituents. I rise to pay tribute to uh, His Royal Majesty, Olatero Olagwe, from the point of view of the fact that he taught us in the Nigerian Law School legally 1985 to 1986. He was fondly called OO by the students. He taught us. Nigerian civil procedure. I, my comment about him is basically on the fact that he was a teacher that knew his onions. And that is why those of us that pass through teachers like that can attest to the fact that he was worth his salt. I read about his death in the papers and I just said, oh, oh, is gone. That's the much I can say about him. Those of us that uh, were, were in the Nigerian Law School for the period 85 to 86 knew that that was a teacher. On this basis, I offer my condolences to the Kingdom of O and Nigeria at large. Thank you. This is my, li my little comment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleague. I rise to pay tribute to a quintessential Oba of Yoruba land, in particular, and Nigeria in general. Oba, His Royal Highness, Oba Folagbadi David Victor Olateru Olagwegi III, ascended the throne 
where there was Christ, when there was Christ, prolonged, protracted crisis in the traditional council of our world. But because of his person, his character, his sagacity, he was able to bring peace to the traditional council in our world. And also in the new state in general. He became the chairman of Council of Overs and preached and ensured peace in the state. My encounter with him was during the political uh, activism of Ondo State. He was able to manage the political uh, activism in the state. At that time, he, when he became the chairman of Council of Harvard, I was the time Dr. Mulusha Gumbimiko, Dr. Mulusha Gumagagu, uh, every Nigerian knew how active politics was at that time, and he played a role that brought peace and ensured that the volatility of politics in those states that was enacted in 1983 did not repeat itself. We are going to miss him greatly in his uh, legal profession and also in political circle in those states. I joined the people of my constituency to say that we can so rest in perfect peace and God to grant the family the fortitude to bear the loss. We're going to miss him greatly in Odo State, and we're going to miss him in Nigeria. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Adieu, Baba Olater Olagbegi, the third. Thank you. Honorable Lord. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. My honorable colleagues, my name is Laura Obakar. I represent the people of Yola North Yola South here and from Adamawa State. Um, I think uh, I must also pay tribute to the line of jury, for he taught me in the Nigerian law school when law school was only in Lagos in the year 1987, 1988. Um, Dr. Oho is undoubtedly an intellectual think tank. He loves his uh, students and he has a power, a skill in imparting knowledge. Uh, definitely very accommodating, very simple, and you hardly know that he is even a prince. Even at that time, we even I don't even know that he was a prince because he is a very simple person. So I think uh, Nigerians and particularly we, his disciples, we will certainly miss him. And uh, I joined my colleagues here in saying that um, his gentle soul rest in perfect peace. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, His uh, Excellency, the Deputy Speaker. Uh, thank you very much. My name is uh, Lasso Yusu. I represent the report to Olorunga, Oruru Oshibufara constituency, are from the state of Oshun. So many people have said so many things about the late Olowo. But the one that interests me most is that the father of the late Olowo had about 117 children, of which more than 100 of them were university graduates or are university graduates. And it is on record too that the father who was late on our himself, was deposed during the action group days, during the crisis of action group days. And the man was restored back as the Olowo of our was some 26, 27 years later to become the other. And I remember the then governor of Odo State, he said it in one of the interviews, when he was to bring back the father of the late Olowo that how do you treat a man who has trained about 100 children up to the university level? So that's a very powerful family in Yoruba land. 
And in fact, it's because of their education that people don't get to know them too much. That is one of the, in fact, if you go to all sectors of economy in Nigeria, you see the Latin roller beggars. Banks, judiciary, name it, they are there. So we are here celebrating the death of one of the icons of the most powerful family in Yoruba land. The Olaten Rolagbegis are very powerful. There are many, they are well trained. And uh, let me also add that uh, Owo is the seat of the, 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 that free education that everybody talk about in Nigeria. Owo is the seat of free education. Because the free education of our laws program of those days was actually put together by the late Michael Adekule Ajasi. So, as a Yoruba man, I have to say that we are proud that the Olaten Rolagbegis have contributed to the growth of the Yoruba land by making sure that all the children they brought forth are not burden on the society. They are well-trained people, and uh, I will enjoy my colleagues and pay condolences with your people and the Yoruba race and Nigeria at large. That that is a family that we can have a lot to pick from and a lot to learn from. Me so rest in perfect peace. Amen. Well, as um, one of his students too, I think it's befitting of me to say one or two things about him. Um, for me, the late Imperial Majesty was, of course, a great mind. It's uh, amply stated by the Honorable Dr. Bode Ayurinde. He was actually great before he ascended into greatness when he became the Olo of Oko, Owo. No wonder most of us his students then referred to him as the great Oho. So he was already great before he found greatness when he ascended to the throne of his ancestors. If we're anything today, most of us of our generations and generations before us, it was because people like the late Imperial Majesty deposited part of their greatness in us. He will live in our lives forever. And we will continue to reflect part of that greatness that he deposited in us. And to live in the hearts of people you've touched is not to die. These legacies we will sustain. He was no doubt a great mind. May his gentle soul raise in perfect peace. And our condolences go to his immediate family, the whole community, the legal community in Nigeria, and the good people, the government and the good people of Ondo State. May God bring comfort to all those that are mourning. Um, part of the prayers that um, as part of our tradition is uh, we should observe a minute's silence in honor of the departed let uh, law of our kingdom. May we please kindly rise to observe a minute's silence in this honor. gentle soul raised in perfect peace. Amen. Any member who has a petition to present to the house may please rise to do so. Honorable Bila. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My very honorable colleagues, Mark Tese Miller, representing Gwe East, Gwe West Federal Constituency of Benue State. I have a petition from the Growth and Employment Project Participants Forum. The project is the World Bank.
Agriculture project that has been embroiled in a lot of controversy, which I've had cause to raise motions on before this Honorable House. I'd like to crave your indulgence, Mr. Speaker, to lay this petition before the Honorable House. Please proceed and lay the petition. Any more petitions? Honorable E.J., very prolific <laughs> in presenting petitions. We have missed you this days. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, our honorable colleagues, I remain your friend, your brother, Honorable E.J. Agmonima, representing the good people of Ego, Bubaha Federal Constituency, Edo State. Mr. Speaker, I have a petition from a civil society group, Empowerment for Unemployed Youth, an initiative of the Nigeria Unemployed Youth Vanguard, over the xenophobic and heinous killings of Nigerians in South Africa. Mr. Speaker, sir, this group are demanded from this Honorable House an immediate action to be taken against South African government for the inhumane and heinous treatment and crime against Nigerian living in South Africa. Mr. Speaker, they are saying that the Nigerian government and the people of Nigeria over the years help to fight apartheid in the South Africa. But unfortunately, these days, they are paying Nigerians with this killing of Nigerian people who live in South Africa. And they are giving the South African government the seven days ultimatum to address this genocide perpetrated by the South African people. And they are asking this house, Mr. Speaker, a member of this Hallow Chamber, to take this matter as a matter of urgent public importance as it relates to Nigeria citizens. Mr. Speaker, I pray your indulgence to lay the petition before this Honorable House. Please proceed and lay the petition. Any more petitions? None. So petition referred to the Committee on Public Petitions. Point of order, Honorable Goni Bukat. The one. I've referred to the already. I somebody. Right, Honorable Speaker, Yakubu Dogara, my very respected colleagues, my name is Honorable Goni Bukar Lawan, member representing Burusari, Gaidam Yunusari, I'm from Yobe State. Uh, my point of order is under Rule 4, Order 8, the need to investigate unremitted stamp duties to the Federation account and also use this opportunity to suspend the relevant rule to check the matters now. I so move. Second that to the motion that the matter be considered urgent. Honorable T.J. Yusuf. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My dear colleagues, I rise to second that the motion is urgent enough to be considered. I so second, Mr. Speaker. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. No. I serve it. Seconded the motion that we suspend our rules to enable him to take it. Honorable Dr. Ujam. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues, I'm Honorable Dr. Chukwemeka Mujam, representing the good people of Nkano East and Nkano West Federal Constituency. I'm from Enugu State. I rise to second the motion that we do step down our rules as ably moved and considered today by Honorable Booker. I so second. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. I reserve it. Honorable Goni, you can now move the motion. Uh, thank you very much once again, Mr. Speaker, my very respected colleagues. My name is Honorable Goni Bukar Lawat, member representing Burusari, Gaidan Minusari. Mr. Speaker, I'm from Yobe State. I stand to move that the stamp duties are statutory taxes levied on legal instruments including checks, receipts, military commissions, license and land transaction documents. I was aware that a few years ago, however, banks were mandated to collect stamp duties from account holders. I was further aware that while the deductible amount per bank account seems small, it cumulated adds up to money in billions and trillions of naira and must be subjected to full condition of disclosure and transparency. Alarm at the complicit irregularity by which public institutions, including the Central Bank of Nigeria, CBN, Nigeria Intersettlement System, Nigeria NIPOS services, among others, have over time failed to remit stamp duties, taxes into the Federation account running into trillions. House further notes that NIPOS entered into an agreement in 2014 to collect stamp duties and arm with the Master Services Agreement with NIPOS. The school banking owners approached the Central Bank of Nigeria for authorization to engage deposit money banks, DMBS, and other qualified stamp duties, collection agents, and the CVN if required approval. Out concern that all effort to get details of the remittance of funds realized from the stamp duty tax through the Federation Freedom of Information Act were not successful by the domestic and foreign civil society organization. How's the staff that this will have been used to pay salaries, provide infrastructure, and financing economic development in the country, or at least should have generated some interest in the private where the pounds is domiciled in the commercial bank. I was worried that due to the concern mounting over the non remittance, it is clear and obvious disobedience to TSA and policy for the stamp duties found to be hidden in commercial banks instead of being remitted to the TSA. House resolve to mandate the House to set up an admiral committee to urgently investigate the non-remittance of trillions into the Federation account of TSA and report back to the House within four weeks. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Any second, Honorable Gololo? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mohamed Gololo is my name, representing the good and amiable people of Gama and from Bautista. I rise to second the motion and be moved by Honorable Goni. I so second. Honorable Goni, please lead the debate. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, my very respected speaker and colleagues for giving me this opportunity to move this very important motion. Mr. 
Mr. Speaker, sir, this is an investigation motion <coughs> of which, if this House agree, is one of our mandates to investigate what is going on in this country. Uh, this irregularity by some of the institutions is not acceptable and also as a parliament we have a duty to work. Um, NIFOS Central Bank 2004 last 2004 some time they entered an agreement that they would collect the stamp duties through the banks to remit it to the TSA. So as I'm talking to you, Mr. Speaker, since 2004, no one Kobo remitted to TSA. So that's why I brought this motion to House to look into it and set up a committee to go and investigate this matter because this is a, a criminality as an institution you are collecting stamp duties on the revenue and you are not remitting that what you collected to the government uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, honourable members Every day when we are in the plenary, we are considering or adopting so many bills, establishing universities, and so many institutions. All this required money. And why does money come without commitment by the government? So I ask my very respected colleagues to let your boys and support this motion, allowed Mr. Speaker and the members to, uh, to, to, to appoint this other committee to go and investigate and report back to the House. I so, move, I so submit, Mr. Speaker. Contributor Honorable TJ. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My dear colleagues, I'm TJ Yusuf. I represent Kababuru Jufra constituency. I want to sincerely thank Honorable Goli for coming up with this very, very important uh, motion. Mr. Speaker, my dear colleagues, I urge us all to support this motion because it's an attempt to reduce leakages and to help show up our revenue base. It is a straightforward motion. The intention is to that the people are already paying this money, but it is not going to the right channel. A lot of leakages in this country. A lot of money people pay. Countries that we envy, we look up to, live on these levies. That's their main source of revenue. Unfortunately for us, because most of our activities are still done manually, so the channels are not closed. Mr. Speaker, I urge us, my dear colleagues, to support this motion so as the parliament will be seen taking the step required, uh, we will not just be complaining about things not being double, showing, showing up our revenue base to help the federal government, the executive, have more resources to meet the demands of governance. I so submit, Mr. Speaker. Honorable EJ. Okay. My right honorable speaker and dear colleagues, I remember honorable EJ Agwanyima representing the good people of Ego, Ibubal, our federal constituency, a do state, the heartbeat of the nation. Let me join my honorable friend TJ to support this wonderful motion moved by my honorable colleagues. Mr. Speaker, without fear or favor, the issue or revenue leakages is a serious problem in our dear nation. 
This motion does even need much too much debate, Mr. Speaker, because it's a motion that we address because it's an investigative motion to address how we can curb the menace, how we can reduce the revenue leakages. Because in all various sectors in this country, over the years, past government, they have not done the needful. They haven't done the needful, sir, to put this country in the right perspective. Nigeria can be among the leading nations. Some have some battle shall change us. That's where we, where we are today. Nigeria can be a model living nation. Where we can be, where we all can be proud of Nigeria. All of us. Whether APC, Afghan labor, as a Nigerian, Nigeria deserve to have the best, to get the best. Because God has blessed this country with everything. It is we that are with the problem. So this motion should see the light of day. And the day is very bright. You can see the sun, and I believe the end will justify the means. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for looking up. The sun is shining, that this motion will see the light of day. Thank you. No, I was wondering really if you are real. Because you say we can see the sun. I was trying to see whether I can actually see the sun from here. EJ, better wake up. Former comrades, a partisan. My great speaker, I remain come repeater who hears the Jaya Partisi, representing the great people of Akoko Edo Federal Constituency. Honorable Speaker, I am from Edo State, the cradle of one man, one vote. I stand to support my friend and neighbor. For so many reasons, Mr. Speaker, but particularly to make the point that agencies of government who are supposed to be custodians of extant laws in this country are in the habit of deliberately violating those laws. And oftentimes, when we draw attention to these, people kid over them. Now, I think the time has come for us to be more serious about how to handle criminal violation of laws of the land. It is a serious violation for any agency of government to refuse to deliberately fail to remit funds that they have collected on behalf of the federal government and keep them in their custody and in most cases in uh, commercial banks instead of, you know, a federation account. Interest do accrue, and yet we don't know where those interests go to. So beyond just insisting that these funds must be, you know, uh, remitted to government, I think it is important that we throw set light on how they manage the interest that accrue, and we look at what the position of law is in a matter like this, where agencies of government will be, 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 uh, be in custody of funds that were supposed to be you know, in the Federation account. It is a very serious thing. And we are, we, are, we are very concerned because, Mr. Speaker, the capital element of the appropriation 2019 has not been funded beyond 50%. Projects are, in most cases, abandoned because the capital element of the budget is not properly funded. And here we are talking about funds that would have been able to use you know, for, for the development or for the completion of projects and for development of infrastructure. And so people are misappropriating this. I think this is serious enough for us to support my friend's motion and insist that the committee you know, swing into action as quickly as possible and uh, produce results that will help us to, 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 to raise funds, gather this money to ensure that budget 2019 is properly funded. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I still support. Well, I think Honorable Gwani's contention is that um, it's about this 50 naira is charged by any transaction exceeding 1,000 naira in Nigeria. 
the, the money is supposed to be for stamp duties, the deposit money banks that collect these stamp duties on behalf of government. So if you're a customer of any bank and you do 50 transactions exceeding 1,000 1, in a day, you are charged 50 naira per all of those transactions. And so you can now imagine how much this 50 naira will accumulate into at the end of the day and uh, by the end of the year. So the contention is that this money is never remitted to the CBN. The commercial banks sit on this money that belongs to um, the, the country, the federation account, as a matter of fact. So if, if it is true, you can now just imagine the volume, if we were to know the volume of transactions exceeding 1,000 that are done every year, and we multiply it by 50 naira, you can imagine the amount that the banks are sitting on and loaning to customers at the interest rate of 28%, I guess. I don't know what the interest rate is now. Maybe about 20 something. Let me not say 28, 21%, you are sure? It's more than 21. I'm sure it's more than 21, but I don't know. One of our body who is um, a former banker, always a banker. Maybe you educate us more. Thank you, right honorable scout, honorable colleagues. Uh, this motion again brings to fore the challenges we have in the banking industry. We have asked for a reform of the industry. It appears uh, beyond the issue of uh, criminality that the central bank itself is overwhelmed. In uh, the developed nations, what we call central bank today, monetary policy use, supervision of commercial banks, supervision of uh, other bank institutions, uh, customer complaints commission, are four different agencies in UK. And there are four differences, different agencies in Canada. We are, I mean, these are countries with lesser population. But here, we have an omnibus body called the Central Bank. We have to first manage the monetary policy, I'm the bank of the government, be the treasurer of the government. Now, manage these licensed banks and the Pretoria of uh, finance houses, broad exchange, and have a department of public complaints, customer complaints, all in one body. Uh, having said that one, I hope and I stand to support this motion that it will wake up the central bank to note that a lot of money are still with these licensed banks collected on behalf of government and perhaps when the uh, motion is passed and they are called to answer questions, it will wake them up to know that something wrong particularly is wrong. Maybe what we have been saying is that look at section 25 of Bofia. We have asked, we have mentioned, a motion has been passed in this house, that even the annual accounts of Central Bank is supposed to be laid there annually. We have not received it for four years, and we have passed a motion on it. I want to say that because of the overwhelming responsibility of, of a, a Central Bank, a lot, a lot, a lot needs to be done to reform the industry. And I hope when this motion is passed, we will be taking a step forward in the right direction towards uh, uh, helping the Senate man to do it, to perform his functions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and colleagues. Fred and Deputy Leader, have you given up? No, okay. Okay, Deputy Leader. Speakers and respected colleagues, thank you for giving me this opportunity to add my voice in support of the motion moved by Honorable Goni. I believe this motion is probably taken care of and then just made that to it. It will improve on our uh, revenue base in the country. The Speaker, the Speaker College, this is an investigating motion. So I do not want us to continue dwelling on the matter because we may go to do other things that may be uh, maybe, uh, like kind of determining what possible we, wanna, we, wanna, we may get to know better. So I beg that in, ten, ten, uh, in, in line with our rule, house rules, we allow the investigation to be taken uh, so that we can properly be educated and have proper information for uh, further this uh, action, sir. Thank you very much, Honorable uh, Goni, for bringing this to the fore. Uh, I think such kind of work is encouraged and should be encouraged. Thank you very much, sir. These are my questions. So I'll put the... Okay. This will round up. Finally. Thank you very much. It's not...
My name is Lasso Yusuf. I represent the record of Lorunda. Urulu Shubufara constituency and from the state of Oshu. It's not a debate as such, but a form of uh, reminding us that we pass a bill on the issue of stamp duty, where in that bill it was clearly stated that uh, the stamp duty deduction must be paid into the account of NIPOST. And the bill was correctly passed, but I don't, I don't think it was assented to by President. So we have to note that that even before this motion, while commending the move of the, of the motion, even before the motion, we have taken a, a, what we can call a corrective uh, measure so that the money can be accounted for. And uh, it's painful, before I sit, that banks, the, the so-called banks in Nigeria, I said the so-called banks in Nigeria, because banks in Nigeria don't do their primary assignment of making sure that they stimulate the economy by borrowing, by loan, loaning money to people. So we commend the removal of the motion, like the deputy speaker and deputy leader said, please let us in the next one week see if we can get something out of this uh, investigation because it is so important to those people who are businessmen, 50 naira in so many places means a lot, but to some people they will say 50 naira, what does it And I was, for, for some of us who do transaction every day, you will just be seeing the alert, 50 naira, stamp duty, Naira stamp duty. Before the end of the day, you have about 200 or 250 million, uh, 250 naira you paid. So it's, it's, it's sad. And let us now know the status of the bill itself so that we can bring it back and see what we can do about it because it's important. Thank you very much. Lastly, Honorable Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, my esteemed colleagues. I remain representing the good people of Yenagoa Kolokuma Pokuma Federal Constituency of Biosa State. Mr. Speaker, my esteemed colleagues, I support the motion, however, with a caveat. The caveat, Mr. Speaker, my colleagues, is that uh, this motion has been moved in this, on this floor. And it was given to the telecoms committee to investigate. And being part of that committee, I attended two of these sessions before we all left for the elections. So I don't know, I would implore Mr. Speaker and the House for the Committee on Rules and Business to look into it before actually passing this motion. Thank you. Well, we've been checked by the secretarial staff, the clerk here, and then they said that they've confirmed that this motion is different from the one that we're alerted about. So that's been done on the deal. So I'll put a question. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, yeah, is that it? We move on to the first business of the day, which is presentation of one bill. I now invite the clerk to read the short title of the bill. Honorable Speaker, honorable members, Charter Institute of Forensic and Investigative Professionals of Nigeria is happening in 2019. First reading. Second business of the day, Honorable Colleagues, presentation of two reports standing in the name of Honorable Simon Arabo. Honorable Arabo is now invited to present the reports. You just take the two at once, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Distinguished colleague Simon Arabo is my name. I represent Corporal Consensus. I, as directed, I will move the two motions and present the two reports. May I move that they have to receive the report? of the Committee on Delegate Legislation on the National Tobacco Regulations 2019. May I also move that this House will receive the report of the Conference Committee on the Reviewed Condition of Service in the National Assembly Service. I so move. Second. Point of order? Okay. What about Dr. Ms.
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am Honorable Muhammad Sani Abdu, Al-Kaleriki Federal Constituency, and I'm from Bochi State. I stand on privileges because I am privileged to be a member of the conference committee. And Mr. Speaker, the number two report is definitely shrouded and clouded in controversy. Number one, I am very, very sure that the conference committee was not properly convened. Number two, even the, the, the house side of it, we had a lot of a division between the members. And I thought at least our own side, we should have sat down and agreed that those who decide to absent themselves should be formally, you know, told by their own committee so that we are not taking as if we have not been part of this. So I am trying to say that report number two should be stepped down until we really correct the way the committee has been done. And I'm sure there are some of my colleagues who are not here, they have traveled, but if they are here, they will have really backed me up. And I'm sure Mr. Speaker has been reported of some and do things about this particular conference committee. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So I am asking for you, our good office, to stand it down until it is cleaned out. Then it comes to the House as a clean committee. That is number two, not number one. Thank you. Honorable Arabo, what is your response to this? My response, my, uh, Mr. Speaker, is that my colleague who spoke was invited for the conference committee, he stayed away. It's not part of our rules that if you refuse to attend a conference committee, the report cannot be presented. We are only letting the report today. If he has any issues, if he's not comfortable, let him write a minority report. But he cannot stop us from presenting a report of the conference committee of which he was a member and stayed away. So that, that, that point of order is not well taken. Sir, I am a very responsible member. I always do my duty throughout my two terms here. And it's not only me. If Honorable Chika is here, if Honorable Babale are here, and I'm sure they have reported the things we have supported. It's not true that we have stayed away. I believe all I ask is that for today, let it be stepped down. Let other members of the House of Representatives of that part of this conference committee come and then we sit down and you, they can do whatever they want, but it is not clean. It was not properly convened. And he knows that the first day he called me, I was the first to attend it in, in the Senate, myself and my chairman. There are a lot of things which I don't want my name to be alluded to. And it's not for public consumption, but you are aware to some extent. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Yeah, Honorable Osa, I don't know. Yeah, I, I think the issue is uh, establishing two issues on this matter. One, one issue is that was there any quorum by the conference committee between Senate and the House of Rep? That's one issue we should establish. Now, if you are invited to a conference committee and you fail to come at that particular time, point in time, it doesn't mean that the quorum was not formed. And if we got information that the quorum was formed between Senate and the House of Rep, and they went ahead to be able to agree in that conference report, I think nothing should stop the presentation of such conference committee report. That's what I see. So in the, invariably, I am supporting Robert Rabo on this complete on this issue. But if we set up a precedence through which, if any person did not attend any conference committee at any particular point in time, and he comes to the floor of the house and says, because I didn't attend, and the, con the report should not be presented. And it will be a bad precedent for this National Assembly. Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues, your news is on your table, sir. Thank you. Honorable Daniel Renich. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, my honorable colleagues.
I am Honorable Daniel Rangi, you will represent Wari Federal Constituency. Mr. Speaker, I stand in my honor to say yes, I was a member of the conference committee and was duly invited for the conference committee uh, for the conference meeting by the chairman. Not once, not two times, not three times, severally with various text messages. And I tried, I promised that I was going to be there, and I was there. I made my position known, and that, they, that my colleague couldn't make it and was unable to attend that conference committee cannot invalidate the presentation or the report itself. It's just that at the presentation stage, when it comes to consideration at the committee of the whole, he could object to it. Because whether he likes it or not, yes, whether he likes it or not, it's a report in which he was supposed to be a member, and I'm a member, I attended, and we, we, we did deliberated on it. It wasn't just from the House alone. The, the Senate, our Senate counterparts were all there. I think Kapunta was there. Honorable Chika himself was, well, no, no, not Chika. Um, Babale was there. He had his uh, uh, Sunday at the budget. All of us were there. They had their own say. They had their own issues. They had their observations. But that shouldn't, you know, invalidate this report at the submission stage. That is my point. When it goes to the committee of the whole for consideration, such objections can be tolerated, but not at this point. If we do it, it would be a bad precedence of accepting a minority report at the point of presenting a report. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, I understand the issues that have been raised. <coughs> and um, Honorable Arabo, I thought that we had a conference on this. And uh, you assured me this morning that the matter, this morning, that the matter has been resolved. So if it's still outstanding, you know, Ono demands that you shouldn't have presented that report. That's the truth. Because we had an agreement, and you assured me this morning, morning that um, it's been resolved and you are laying the report. I said, okay, if it's been re resolved, then there's no problem. Uh, so if, if that matter has not been resolved, I will, I'm sorry to say this. It's not that we're setting any dangerous precedent. It's something that we're aware of. Sorry. I will still have to hold our conference with all the members of the conference committee uh, before this report the, is laid. I, ma, 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 Mr. Speaker, sir, with all due respect, I, I, I confronted my colleague this morning. I'm, I'm, I'm going to lay the report. He never gave me any impression. He cannot ambush me. That was ambush. That was ambush. Deputy Leader. Silence, please. Mr. Speaker and his fellow colleagues, I suppose this is a House of Representatives that is supposed to be making laws and they be guided by the laws itself. And uh, by our rules, sir, I'm going by our rules. I do not have any sentiment in terms of what is happening. But I thought, like it was observed by Honorable Osai, if there was conference committee report and uh, there are objections to it, the other alternative is to provide mandatory report or to provide another report that may be in the majority against possibly the chairman of the committee. If we go otherwise, sir, we may now be injuring our own rules and we may not be doing the right thing. As far as I'm concerned, there is need for, for, for us to come together to do things in a harmonious manner so that we reduce some But that is not to say that our rules should be thrown out. Our rules are very sacrosanct, they are supposed to be well respected, and I do not expect the chairman of the committee, if he had discussion with the speaker, again to go against the words of the speaker. So we are now in the very uh, much fixed position that is dangerous as far as I'm concerned to the normal position of this house. It's no normal, that's the way to do this, sir. If you are taking you are, you are, you are giving his words and you are taking it, I expect him to obey and respect it. Whole line and sinker. That's where we are. If we are giving him a condition as to how the report will be laid, we should not put ourselves into bad names because, from what I'm hearing uh, from the back, it's, 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 a, 
is good, but for if we continue to insist on the thing to happen, we are about one thing that we should wind up in the very, on the very clean slate. We are doing a very good job all this year, sir. Thank you very much. These are my, these are my contribution. Well, um, I understand. I don't think we are going to better the, the, the situation. Honorable Abonta. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I want to ask you, what is democracy? Majority will have their way, minority will have their say. What is the sense of uh, putting up a conference committee? This was all agree. It was well mobilized. I got the invitation. He got. For three different days, we sat. On the final day, we sat, met quorum, and discussed. Whatever agreement of, 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 of the, the chairman has said, the issue now is, like Latvika said, what does the rule say? We met all the conditions. As if there's something now happening, we had the opportunity to have come to say, this is my opinion. It was fully debated, agreed, and talked, voted, and put the right in. He's merely bringing back the report of the message sent to us. We may be laying a very dangerous precedent now if we shift or delay or that. He should be allowed to lay it. During consideration, you bring whatever you think you're doing. But for now, he's merely bringing back the message, the assignment was given to us. And we followed the rules. So what is that? What, what are we hiding? What is in this report that we do not want to look at? Therefore, if we met the condition, Mr. Speaker, we should move towards the tenets of democracy. We should be defined. We should not be guided by sentiment. What are the rules for? If we do this today, Mr. Speaker, let me ask you a question. If, for example, you said something on another paper and I avoid sitting, and then I can come to you and say, because I did not come, that is not what he's doing. If the conference committee or committee is not a continuation of plenary, we are being told that committees are a continuation of plenary. So it, what he's saying now is like he did not attend plenary, and he said that the votes of procedure should not be considered. Mr. Speaker, you should be allowed to do the reports. Thank you. I wish the matter were as simple as you have put it. Uh, whip. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable Adodogwa is my name. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I just want to come in by... I want to come in by way of a little reinforcement, even though I may not have the needed strength to reinforce what you have said. But I want to believe, sir, with the seeming controversies going around the committee and the report, I think we are better guided by the earlier position you have mentioned. Since there are controversies surrounding the whole thing, I think you are right if you can now convene a general meeting, like a conference meeting, with you presiding over that small meeting, and get the right faults of what is actually happening. If we do this, sir, Mr. Speaker, we are going by conventions. If you do that, you are respecting our rules, and that is our tradition. Because I want to believe that every other committee, any committee of this House, and whoever is chairing this, that committee, is acting in your capacity as a chair in that mini parliamentary setting. So I want to believe in a situation like this, you need to take uh, this advantage and now meet with them so that you get the right, the right, right pulse of what is actually happening. We will be better guided like that than to go into laying something which at the end of the day you now go into another controversy. Let's save the house, let's save ourselves our the time and do the needful, just as suggested by Mr. Speaker. I, I, I so submit. Well, um, I think my ruling on this will be very simple. Okay. Yes. But no, yes, you can. You know, when it comes to ruling like this, I have to be careful. So that, uh, so that uh, when I'm there, my name is Lassu Yusuf. I represent the report to Allah and the Lulu Supra constituency. I'm from Oshu. You, you have started on the right path. There is only, just only one opening. And I want to advise you, hand it to whatever ruling you want to have. Since it is allowed for minority to have their own report, just follow that part. Whether you are going to meet with them or not, we can step down so that the minority can also now have their own report. Then we leave. So that is the best because we must not, what we are about to do is very serious. That uh, you want to lay a report and one colleague will stand up on the floor of the house and say, don't lay. It's a very dangerous report. That window 
is within the parliamentary practice that the minority will now have their own report, they will come back and lay. In the process, you cannot do your backdoor meeting with them. But let us let the ruling be in that light that the minority report is added to the majority report, then we go. But if it is, if they are, if they are bone of contention of going against the report is ORA, then it's dangerous. There must be a feasible report that they actually went against the report. That's the advice. And it must be brought and it must be handed to the main report so that it can be laid. Thank you, sir. Well, um, this matter, I think, um, can be resolved. And um, if we were to step this report down, it's not the first time we would be doing that. So it's not something that is novel. And um, Honorable Abonte is right to talk about democracy. But in democracy, you have tools of democracy as well. Conflict, compromise, consensus, then progress. Without conflict, constructive conf conflict, there cannot be progress. So I recognize the fact that um, if a minority report comes by virtue of a report from a committee of the House, you know that that one is just there for Parliament to note and for history, for record that some people descended. But what the Parliament will actually go for is the decision of the majority, as amply stated by those who have contributed in the course of this debate. But the point is that the issues being raised are so some things that um, we are aware of and they, they are entirely not related to procedure or the laws governing what we're doing here. So I said that I had to have a discussion with the chairman. I had that discussion with him and I was assured this morning that uh, the matter has been resolved. And that was why I said, okay, we can go ahead and take the report. It has nothing to do with uh, our laws or the rules of the house. Please, Osai. Yes. So leadership means that if we're doing anything, we should just do it very well. It must not only be done, but we should do it very, very well. More so that we're about drawing the curtains to this assembly. So my ruling is that um, we will step it down, and then I will have a meeting with all the members of the conference committee before we proceed to lay the report. And if so be that the minority insists that they must have their opinion registered by the House, they will write the report, the minority opinion, we'll put them together, lay them together at the same time, but the House is not bound to consider minority opinion. It's just there for the records and for people to see in the future that yes, there were members who disagreed with the conclusion. But the truth is that if we go into consideration of a conference report, you know very well, we're not even meant to debate it. We cannot deviate from the conclusion of our conference committee. Once we take it, we have taken it. That is it. You cannot debate, you cannot disagree with it at the level of consideration of conference report. That is the rule of the House. So once it goes now to committee of the whole, it is adopted. So whatever are the disputations, we will resolve them because that is what leadership entails and thereafter we will go ahead and do the right thing. So immediately after sitting, Honorable Arabo, members of uh, this conference committee, Honorable Dr. MS, please, let's, let's meet and resolve whatever issues are there. That is my ruling. This is speaker, so I have another report. Another yes, report. so you step down that and then we we'll take the ones uh -huh. that uh, have no controversy attached to them. I have another report I want to lay, but it has not been seconded. Yeah. Present the report, the one that, there was the first report, so we're stepping down the second report. So we'll take a second to the first report. Honorable Brown. Uh, thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. I am Honorable Randolph Iwo Beni Brown, representing Degma Bonifera Consensus. I'm a reverse man. Mr. Speaker, stand to second the report as ably, ably moved by my brother, Honorable Simon Arabo. I so second. Those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, Zabit. Honorable Arabo, please proceed and lay the report.
as a matter of fact, when we're dealing with conference reports, sorry, please, we can't even have a minority opinion. Because for you to go for a conference, it means that the House has taken a position and the Senate has taken a position and then there's differences in the position of the House and the Senate. So your job as a conference committee is to say, okay, we have adopted the Senate version or we have adopted the House version. You cannot even vary anything at that level, so to say. But whatever the issues are, we will resolve them so that we can do the right thing. We still have time to get it done. That business of the day, honorable colleagues, is presentation of two reports of the Committee on Public Petitions, standing in the name of Honorable Zuma Nkema Bonta. Honorable Abonta is now invited to present the reports. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I remain Uzoma Nkema Abonta. If I may, I present the report of the Committee on Public Petition as contained in other paper item 3 and 4. I pray to read the report. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Have you read the two? Seconda? Honorable Akilaja. Can you second, please? Right, Honorable Speaker, sir. My name, Honorable Comrade Joseph Iraula Akilaja. I represent Ondo is Ondo West Federal Constituency. I rise to second the motion for the subject of report by Right Honorable Abuja. I so second. Thank you. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Eyes of it. First order of the day is commencement of debate on the general principles of Bill for an Act to repeal the Raw Materials Research and Development Council Act, Chapter R3, Laws of the Federation of Nigeria, 2004, and enact the Raw Materials Research and Development Council Bill. And for related matters, standing in the name of the House Leader, Honorable Members will recall that the bill was read the first time on Thursday, 23rd November 2017. I now invite the Leader to move that the bill be now read the second time. I just move that for an act to repeal the Raw Material Research and Development Council Act, CAP Act 3, Laws of Creation of Nigeria, 2004 and enact the role of material research and development council bill for related matters during this quarter. I so move. Seconda, Honorable Benila. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Right to second this very important bill. Um, I so second. Thank you. Leader, please lead the debate. Mr. Speaker, respected colleagues, this bill is very important to repeal and enact the raw material development council. And uh, what they are doing now for now, sir, they are resp responsible for the, uh, developing identifying materials for the purpose of our technical advancement and the utilization of the various industries. The speaker and his colleagues, this person is under the Federal Ministry of uh, uh, Science and Technology. And that uh, what they attempt now of what's been done, what to be done here is to give it a tire, kind of tear and their independence, taking it away from the uh, uh, shackles of the minister uh, authority, giving them governing council board who will be responsible, or who are going to be responsible for the day-to-day -day running and administrative uh, policies of the institution. And uh, this is basically what is being introduced, uh, it is to give them uh, further legal backing and then uh, authority uh, of independence uh, in terms of their own day to day performance. Mr. So speaker, the Federal Coalition is a very straightforward uh, amendment. It is in the light of this I seek and I, I, I urge my colleagues to support this bill uh, so that it can be passed. 
Thank you very much, Mr. Mr. Sir. Honorable colleagues, the question is that the bill will now read a second time. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. No. Is that it? Lux invited to read the long title of the bill. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Members, the bill for now to repeat the raw material in such and government council act have out the law for the federal media to turn on force. And now the raw material is such and government council bill. And for later matters, second reading. Be referred to Committee on Science and Technology. Second order of the day is commencement of debate on general principles of Bill for an Act to establish the Federal Institute for Industrial Research to conduct industrial research for the development of micro, small, medium, and large industries aim at rapid industrialization and social economic development of Nigeria for related matters, standing in the name of the House Leader. Honorable members who recall the bill was read the first time on Thursday, 23rd November 2017. And now I invite the leader to move that the bill be now read a second time. Honorable well, Speaker, sir, respected colleagues, I would like to move that the bill for an act to establish the Federal Institute for Industrial Research to conduct industrial research for the development of micro, small, medium, and large, uh, large industries. Uh, amidst a rapid uh, industrialization and social economic development of Nigeria within the support of Asomo. Rules and business. Thank you, Right Honorable Sika. I'm Dr. Bodhi Ayoni, the representative of the Federal Constituency. I, I rise to second the motion as if moved by the leader of the House. Leader, please lead the debate. Honorable Mr. Speaker, respect your colleagues. This is a very straightforward bill again. The Speaker, the this is an agency that was established far back in 1956. Unfortunately, for 1956 to date, this agency has just been on paper and they did the activity without the legal backing. What they attempt now is to give the, 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 to enact the, 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 the act so that the institution can have the proper legislative uh, uh, backing for it to exist. Like I did mention, they have been doing a lot of work, sir. For 1950, that is dated back from the colonial master date, and they are basically responsible for identifying and characterizing local raw materials for the use of industry, developing and then technological upgrading in indigenous uh, uh, in, in one, developing pilot scale uh, 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 operations. They have been doing a lot of job. Uh, I think they are situated in Lagos uh, right now, but unfortunately, for all the number of years, uh, they do not have. Uh, law backing their own existence. It is the lot of this that we urge honorable colleagues to support this bill during the second time. Thank you very much, sir. Any contributor to the debate? Okay, I guess um, it's a straightforward bill, so I'll put a question. And the question is that the bill will now read the second time. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, is it? Now invite the clerk to read the long title of the bill. Honorable Speaker, honorable members, the bill for now to establish the Federal Institute for Industrial Research to, co to conduct industrial research for the development of micro, small, medium, and large indus industries. They are rapid industrialization and social economic development of Nigeria and for related matters. Second reading. Bill referred to Committee on the Whole. My first referral to Committee on Science and Technology on that bill will be reversed to Committee of the Whole as well because we don't really have the time to do public hearing on these bills. So um, the class should not refer of the bill on the, the repeal of raw material research and development council act chapter R three laws of the Federation of Nigeria um, is now to committee of the whole as against committee on science and technology. Third order of the day is a motion on extension of time 
for the ad hoc committee to investigate the non remittance of funds to the Federation account by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation from January 2018 to date, standing in the name of Honorable Chukuka Oyema. Honorable Oyema is now invited to move to motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Chukuka Oyema, I represent Obaru Federal Constituency of Anambra State. I move the motion for the extension of time for the ad hoc committee to investigate the non-remittance of funds to the Federation account by the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation from January 2018 to date. I so move, Mr. Speaker. The motion has been moved, Honorable Chidoka. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker. My name is Obina Chidoka, representing Idemi North, Idemi South Federal Constituency of Anambra State. I write this afternoon to second the motion as moved by the leader, the Minority Leader, Chukuka Onyema. Thank you. Yes, there's no need to argue this motion. It's a straightforward thing, so I'll put the question. Those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, Zabit. Fourth order of the day, honorable colleagues, the motion on discharge of the Committee on Federal Capital Territory from referral on the bill pursuant to Order 17, Rule 3, Sub Rule 1G of the Standing Orders of the House of Representatives, standing in the name of Honorable Edward G. Pajo. Honorable Pajo is now invited to move the motion. In his absence, Honorable Dr. Bode, I arrange they will take the motion. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Colleagues. I'm Dr. Bode Ayoride. I represent Ogos, a federal constituency from Mondo State. The House, this, uh, this, this is a motion to discharge the Committee on Federal Capital Territory from referral on a bill pursuant to Order 17 Rule 31 g of the standing order of the House of Representatives. The House notes that the on the mention bill was read the second time in 20, 2018 and referred to the Committee on Federal Capital Territory for further legislative actions. Abuja Geographic Information System Agency uh, on the 10th July 2018, aware that the committee is yet to present a report on the bill, contrary to the provisions of Order 17 Rule 3 1G of the standing orders of the House of Representatives, to which any matter referred to any committee shall be treated within 30 days. Otherwise, the committee shall stand discharged after 60 days and the matter committed to the committee of the board for consideration. The House is called to resolve to discharge the committee on the federal capital territory of the above mentioned bill and commit sin to the committee of the whole house for consideration. I so move. Seconder. Any seconder? Honorable Mark Tisse Bila. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. My honorable colleagues. Honorable Zakari Mohammed, Tisse please. Bila, representing Gwe East, Gwe West, Federal Constitution. Can you keep quiet? Seat. I rise to second the motion ably moved by Honorable Ab Amorine. I so second. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, is it? Move to consideration of reports. Fifth order of the day is consideration of a bill for act to establish the Nigerian Independent Warehouse Regulatory Agency and for related matters. Honorable members who recall that the bill was committed to the Committee of the Whole on Tuesday, 9th April 2019. Honorable Edward Gyang Pajok will move for its consideration. Honorable Ayurin, the please move for the consideration of the bill. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Colleagues. Same appearance. I rise to move that uh, for the consideration of the report on the bill for an act to establish the Nigerian Independent Warehouse Regulatory Agency and for related matters, House Bill 116. I so move. Seconder. Please. Honorable Osai, Silence, please. Nicholas Osai. Honorable Victor Mokolo, can you go back to your seat? It's so perfect that they name it twice. Go back to your seat. I remain Honorable Osai, Nicholas Osai. I represent the local Federal Constituency of the United States. I rise to second the motion as moved by the acting chairman of business and access. Those in favor of the motion say aye. 
those against it say nay. Eyes of it. Sixth order of the day, honorable colleagues, consideration of Bill for Act to provide for suppression of piracy and other maritime offenses, give effect to the provisions of the United Nations Convention Law of the Sea. 1982. <coughs> The Convention for the Suppression of Unlawful Acts Against the Safety of Maritime Navigation, 1988, and its protocols and for related matters. Honorable members will recall that the bill was committed to the Committee of the Whole on Tuesday, 9th April, 2019. Honorable Edward Young Pajok will move for the consideration of the report. In his absence, Honorable Bode, I will in the place. Thank you, Right Honorable Speaker, Honorable Colleagues. Same appearance. I rise to move for the consideration of a report on the bill for an act to provide for suppression of piracy and other maritime offenses, give effect to the provisions of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, 1982, the Convention for the Suppression of Unlawful Acts Against the Safety of Maritime Navigation, 1988, and its protocols. And for related matters, I so move. Honorable Osai, please second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, distinguished honorable colleagues. I remain honorable Osai, Nicholas Osai. I represent the local one federal constituency of the state. I rise to move the second motion as moved by the acting chairman of business and rule. I so second. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, serve it. Council of Nigeria to conduct qualifying examinations regulate the counseling profession for related matters. Honorable members will recall the bill was committed to the Committee of the Whole on Thursday, 11th April 2019. Leader of the House will move for the consideration of the, the report. Madam Speaker, and colleagues, I ask you that the move on act to establish the council. Council Practicing Council of Nigeria to conduct qualifying examination to regulate the counseling provision and will let the matter be ready that we consider that because of the report. Thank you, sir. Seconda. Rules of business. Thank you, Right Honorable Mr. Governor, colleagues. I rise to second the motion, namely moved by the Leader of the House. I so second. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. The ayes have it. Head order of the day, honorable colleagues, consideration of bill for act to establish Federal Capital Territory FCT Directorate of Road Traffic and Motor Vehicle Administration Service to be saddled with the responsibility of road traffic management and motor vehicle administration services within the Federal Capital Territory FCT and for related matters. Honorable members will recall that the bill was committed to the Committee of the Whole on Tuesday, 14th November 2018. Honorable Pajok will move for the consideration of the report. Honorable Boyd, um, Bode, are you in there standing in his place? 
Thank you, right honorable speaker, honorable colleagues. Same appearance. Arise to move for the consideration of report on the bill for an act to establish Federal Capital Territory Directorate of Road Transport and Motor Vehicle Administration Service to be saddled with the responsibility of road traffic management and motor vehicle administration services within the Federal Capital Territory and for related matters. I so move. Honorable Osai, I rise to second the motion as moved by the Acting Chairman of Business and Assessment. Just wait. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Ninth order of the day is consideration of bill for an act to establish a federal polytechnic quality in Delta State to provide full-time courses in technology, applied science, management, and other fields of study, and to make provisions for general administration of the polytechnic and for related matters. Honorable members will recall that the bill was committed to committee of the whole on Wednesday, 17th April 2019. Honorable Edward Patcher will move for his consideration. In his absence, honorable body will take it. Thank you, right honorable speaker, honorable colleagues. Same appearance. I rise to move for the consideration of the report on the bill for an act to establish Federal Protecting Pilot Delta State to provide full time courses in technology, applied science, management, and other fields of study, and to make provisions for general administration of the Protecting and for related matters. I so move. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm Yusuf Mubayakub. I represent Gombe on federal constituency from Lamar. Order. I rise to second Order. the motion Please. moved by the acting chairman, business and rules. I so second. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against the Senate. I submit. Tenth order of the day is consideration of Bill for Act to provide for establishment of the Defense Research and Development Bureau. DRB, DB, and for related matters. Honorable members will recall that the bill was committed to the Committee of the Whole on Wednesday, 17 April 2019. Leader of the House will move for its consideration. that before I ask to provide the establishment of defense, research, and development bureau, consider for the because report as so much rules and business thank you Master, mr speaker honorable colleagues arise to second the motion they'll be moved by the uh, leader of the house i so second those in favor of the motion say aye those against it say nay i submit the eleventh order of the day is resumption of consideration report of the Committee on Federal Capital Territory on a bill for act to provide for establishment of Federal Capital Territory University of Science and Technology Abadi and for related matters. Honorable members will recall that on Wednesday, 10th April 2019, the House and the Committee of the Whole considered clauses 1 to 5 and deferred for the consideration of the bill. Honorable OK, Jeff, will move for the consideration. To move that the consideration of the bill to resume. Honorable Bode. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Honorable colleagues, I rise to apply that this uh, item be stepped down as Honorable KJF is not on the floor of the House. Item stepped down by leave of the House. Twelfth order of the day is consideration report of Committee on Tertiary Education Services Bill for an act to amend the University of Lagos Act Chapter U9 Laws of Federation of Nigeria 2004 to specify the minimum qualifications for the chairman of the governing council, ownership of intellectual property, and to provide for pre-action notice to the university authority for related matters. Honorable members will recall the report was laid on Thursday, 11 April 2019. Honorable Amin Suleiman will move for its consideration. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Colleagues, arise to apply that. Mr. Speaker, Speaker. this report is stepped down. As, uh, no, 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 no. Okay. 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 
Jaripe, Agwam Jaripe will take the report in the absence of um, the retired comrade. Right, Honorable Speaker, Honorable colleagues, I'm Honorable Jarek Bar from Jarek I represent the good people of Obuda Yalafira constituency and from Cross River State. I hereby move that the House do consider the report of the Committee on Tertiary Education and Services on a bill for an act to amend the University of Lagos Act at U9 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 and to specify the minimum qualification for the chairman of the governing council, ownership of intellectual property, and to provide for pre action notice to the university authority and for related matters, and approve the recommendations there. I so move. Seconda. Seconda. Honorable Oni, oh, you finally got the tie. Because I was watching you when you came in. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Is it coming? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my name is Robo Jola. I represent the West, F4, and in the federal constituency of the state. I rise to second the motion as a by my honorable colleagues, honorable Jalimi, as a second. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. I serve it. Thirteenth word of the day, honourable colleagues, consideration of report of the Committee on Federal Road Safety Commission on the bill for an act to repeal the Federal Road Safety Commission Establishment Act 2007 and enact a bill for an act to establish the Nigeria Road Safety Commission with responsibility for traffic management, prevention and minimization of road traffic crashes, the supervision of users of such roads, regulation of traffic thereon, Clearing of obstructions on any part of the roads, education of drivers, motorists, and other members of the general public on the proper use of the roads and for related matters. Honorable members who recall the report was laid on Tuesday, 22nd January 2019. Honorable Yunus Abakar will move for the consideration of the report. Honorable Bodia, it appears. Okay. Honorable Olamide Oni is there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my name is Honorable O'Neill Lamide. I'm the of the chairman of the committee, RS, to move the motion that the House do receive and consider report on the House to consider the report of the Committee on Federal Road Safety Commission on the belief and act to repeal the Federal Road Safety Commission establishment at 2007 and enact the belief and act to establish the Nigeria Road Safety Commission with responsibility for traffic management, prevention, and demonstration of road traffic crashes, supervision of users of such road, regulation of traffic uh, narrow, clearing of obstructions on any part of the road, education of drivers, motorists, and other members of the general public on the proper use of the road and related matters. I so move. Um, any seconda? Seconda? Who is it there? I can't see you well. Oh, one of Michael. You are grown bad now, so don't confuse. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My name is Taiwo Michael Akutola. I represent the Gwe Down and our federal constituency. I rise to second to the motion moved by Olamideoni on the consideration of Federal Safety Commission report. I so second. Sir. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Ayes. Love it. Fourteenth order of the day is consideration report of the ad hoc committee on establishment of National Assembly Legislative Museum and Archives. Honorable members, recall the report was laid on Tuesday, 16 April 2019. Honorable Sam Unuibo will move for its consideration. Sam Unuibo is now on the floor. Is anyone taking the report on its behalf? Otherwise, Chairman, Chairman rules some business. Right, honorable colleagues, I rise to apply that the report on the establishment of national.
National Assembly Legislative Museum and Kaiser will step down as Honorable Samuel Ibu is not on the floor. Step down by leave of the House. Fifteenth order of the day, honourable colleagues, consideration of eight reports of the Committee on Public Petitions. Honourable Uzoma Inkema Bonte will move for the consideration of the eight reports. Honourable Abonta, please. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Uzoma Inkema Bonta. May I move that the report will be shown me? Considered as contained in order paper item 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. And I so move, Mr. Speaker. Honorable UK. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I represent the Agua Federal Constituency. I start to second the motion to consider the report by the public petition committee chairman. I so second this. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. I serve it. Colleagues, we will move on. Oh, okay. Announcement, then we move into committee. Order. I hope the DS is around. Okay. Um, what's the name of this ad hoc committee that we did yesterday? Composition of the ad hoc committee membership to investigate circumstances that led to the loss of revenue on deep show contract and determine the actual loss to the government of Nigeria. House Resolution 2104 2019. Membership Honorable Darlington Wokocha, Honorable Ishaka Ishaku Shekarao, Honorable Asabe Vilita Bashir, Honorable Dr. Tajuddin Abbas, Honorable Shegu. Honorable Shegun, 
Honorable Ben Ilar, Honorable Uzoma, Kema Bonta, Honorable Aminu Suleiman, Honorable Osai Nicholas Osai, be chaired by Honorable Victor Nwokolo. Leader, motion to resolve into committee of the whole. That honorable speaker said that fellow colleagues, I rise to move that the house duties of the committee of the whole to consider the post. I so move. Rules and business. Rise, honorable speaker, honorable colleagues. I rise to second the motion. I say be moved by the leader of the house. I so second. Those in favor of the motion say aye. Those against it say nay. Aye, is it? I'll say by resolving to committee of the whole to consider the reports. Honorable colleagues, the first report will be considered. Honorable colleagues, the first report will be considered is that of the the one. Presented by the chairman of and business, and is on the beef and now to establish the Nigeria Independent Warehouse Regulatory Agency and other related matters. And now, by chairman of and business, who is jumping up and down to speak to the report. that uh, it will be 
independent and to create a warehouse, uh, a warehouse to regulate, I mean, regulate the warehouse uh, business in Nigeria. The body is to be known as the Nigeria Independent Warehouse Regulatory Agency. And as the name implies, Mr. Chairman, it's a regulatory agency, a body to be cooperated with personal association and common sale. Uh, the bill provides for the establishment of the government board and other organs, including its powers, functions. The House is called to consider the, the board, sir. Thank you, sir. The report has 105 clauses. We therefore go ahead to consider the clauses. Clause 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. What's your grounds? What's your grounds? No, I'm coming to Fanike, don't worry. Fanike is my friend. I'm coming to Fanike. Okay, I'll sign to you. Six, plus seven, plus eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five. Twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, thirty-one. Have you spotted anything? Thirty-two. 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, Fifty, fifty-one, fifty-two, fifty-three, fifty-four, fifty-five, fifty-six, fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty, sixty-one, sixty-two, sixty-three. 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. 101, 102, 103, 104, 105. Schedule. 
Explanatory memorandum, long title of the bill. The next report to be considered is that of the House Committee on Magda. On review for now to provide for the suppression of privacy, privacy and other maritime offenses, give effect to the provisions of the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, 1982, the Convention for the Suppression of Unlawful Acts Against the Safety of Maritime Navigation, 1988, and protocols and for related matters, House Bill 1571. And I invite is it the chairman maritime and safety or the chairman of chairman of business to speak to the report. Thank you, Chairman. Honorable colleagues, uh, the bill uh, is to provide for an act to, uh, for the suppression of piracy and other maritime offenses. And give birth to the provisions of the United Nations Convention. As titled, it is seen, Honorable Chairman, that it is uh, a bill to domesticate some of the international conventions that Nigeria has uh, is a signatory to. The objective of the bill, Mr. Chairman, Honorable Colleagues, is to prevent and suppress piracy, arm robbery, and any other unlawful act against a ship, the aircraft, and any other maritime craft, however propelled, including fixed and floating platforms. The bill has 23 sections. The house is thereby called to consider them brought by the Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, Chairman of and Business. The bill is set, the report itself has 23 clauses. Let's go ahead and consider them. Clause 1, 2, clause 3, clause 4, clause 5, clause 6, clause 7, clause 8, clause 9. Chama Marie, plus nine, plus ten. Plus eleven, plus twelve, plus thirteen, plus fourteen, plus fifteen, plus sixteen, plus seventeen, plus eighteen, plus nineteen, plus twenty. Class 21, class 22, interpretation, class 23, citation, explanatory memorandum, long title of the bill. The next report to be considered is still that of the House Committee on uh, Rules and Business. On a bill for now to establish the Counseling Practitioner Council of Nigeria to conduct qualified examinations, regulate the counseling profession, and other related matters, as Bill 1603. And I invite Chairman, House Committee on Rules and Business, to speak to the report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and honorable colleagues. This is a bill for an, an act to establish the Counseling Practitioners Council of Nigeria to conduct qualifying examinations, regulate the counseling profession, and other related matters. The bill is, uh, has the objective of professionalizing counseling. As it is today, uh, the situation of the country requires that all higher institutions, establishments, to have uh, uh, counselors. The bill itself, which has uh, about 17 sections, uh, 16 sections, uh, uh, provide for establishment of the counseling practitioners' council. It's like the, the rather than being a voluntary association, like a chartered one, so it's now a common propelled council. So it will be a council established by the federal government. The house is called upon. To consider the the bill clause by clause. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. 
Thank you, Chairman. The bill has the report has 19 clauses. Let's go ahead and consider the clauses. Clause one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, first schedule, second schedule, explanatory memorandum, long title of the bill. The next report to be considered, I think, is that of the House Committee on Road Safety. On a bill for now to establish FCT Directorate of Road Traffic, no FCT rather. On a bill for now to establish FCT Directorate of Road, Road Traffic and Motor Vehicle Administration Services to be signed with responsibility of road traffic management and motor vehicle administration services within the Federal Capital Territory and other related matters. House Bill 1279. And I invite the Chairman of the House Committee on FCT to speak to the report. Or in his absence, the Chairman of some business. Chairman of FCT, are you representing? Yes? Okay, Honorable You are speaking for FCT. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the bill is about, it's containing about 91 courses. Uh, with the uh, first schedule, second schedule, and explanatory notes. It's all about the uh, Federal Road Safety Commission on a PEU and Act to repeal the Federal Road Safety Commission and Establishment Act 2007 and to reenact a PEU and Act to establish the Nigeria Road Safety Commission with responsibilities for traffic allocation and safety management, prevention and minimization of road traffic crashes. Submission of users of social media, regulation of tra traffic gathering, clearing of construction at any part of the road, education of drivers, motorists, and other members of the public general, and proper use of the road, and for all of them matters. Uh, so much. Which one did you just read? Which one did you just read? Title of what you have just read. Pardon, sir. The title of the bill. The title is the bill to establish the Nigerian Road Safety Commission. It is the Assembly of Road Safety Commission. Thank you, everybody. You discovered that I corrected myself when I first of all said. It was a bill of Federal Road Safety Commission, and I reverted to FCT. So this bill is setting up a motor vehicle uh, inspection unit under FCT. So it's, it's going to be presented by FCT. Take seat, please. So, buddy. Thank you, Chairman, Honorable colleagues. The bill being considered is for an act to establish FCT Directorate of Road Traffic and multiple vehicle administration service to be saddled with the responsibility of road traffic management and motor vehicle administration services within the FCT and other related matters. The bill has 29 clauses. The, the objective of the bill is to provide for uh, an agency that will have directories to manage multiple uh, vehicle movement in uh, movement and application in FCT. It has a governing board and provides for powers, functions of the boards and the departments of the uh, agency to be created. So I call, humbly call on the House to consider the bill clause by clause. Thank you, Chairman. The bill has 29 clauses, so we will we go ahead to consider the clauses. Clause 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 
10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, Schedule explanatory memorandum. Expl to appropriation of this money. Yes, I recognize your side. We are calling a lot of our laws in appropriation, taking power from the house of representative and senate. When you check the establishment of funds for services, it gives the agency a lot of room to appropriate any money they get. That records the National Assembly. You know the National Assembly oversees that city. So if we don't put a clause into it, it means that every money they get, even when we buy them tomorrow, they appear before us how they utilize their money. They will tell us that they lost. They will tell us that they lost as they power them to do whatever it is they want to do. That records to the National Assembly. If we can find a particular clause in it and put as to be appropriated. Appoint us to that clause that says they can spend the money they yeah, generate. Clause 13. 13. 13. Yeah. Thank you. Please, honorable colleagues, refer to clause 13. What, what if you read clause 15? Read clause 15, let's see. I think 15 has taken care of uh, what uh, Please, can you read 15 and see? But we also need to correct that uh, 15. He said the service shall not later than 30th September each year or other dates stipulated by law or policy submitted submit to the Federal Capital Territory Administration and estimate of income and expenditure of, of the service as approved by the board and for the next fiscal year for cooperation into the national budget. I think it has been Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I won't have this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a general comment on the particularly but three miscellaneous uh, when it's very general in the area of saying uh, penalty and additional and remark. Uh, okay, let me say specifically page what page twenty what page page twenty violation license conditional general and overcome. Driving without driver's license in possession. Fine is 2,000. Additional, a pound vehicle. Chairman, colleagues, we will know how we act on this in Nigeria. If for any reason you forget your license, driving without the fine says 2,000. They can also impound the vehicle. If you allow them to break this, most people will have. Over the pound, the normal place are going to give you tickets. What in time to pay? What say you pound vehicle? If you go further, the whole thing is repeat of the pound vehicle, pound on license. When, when, when you are paying, when you say this, you ticket 
on what name they who is you don't have a driver's license and what they are saying their remark is show proof of ownership. Let, let me have so if you show proof of ownership, yeah, then they are likely not to impact your vehicle and they will issue ticket. If you allow look at the remark. In front of it, look at the remark. Let me just one. If I may come down and share this is my bill, I I crafted it, sir. If you look the, the, in, in advanced world, even for traffic offense, the noble jump inside a vehicle, they check you and they give you tickets. To pay with a reasonable time. Yeah, the cabinet number is there. For if you look at the whole thing here, if you're doing in pound vehicle, in pound vehicle, that says yes, I got it. Okay, for example, uh, driving signal at level crossing, in pound vehicle, see a psychiatric doctor. How many psychiatrists do you have in Nigeria? Or where? Where are the psychiatric doctors? All the offenses are saying see a psychiatrist in pound vehicle. That is the only reason you are chairman. You are driving, when we sit out here, you don't have your car. In the pound vehicle, you will see a psychiatric doctor to confirm madness or that. I mean, it's too secure, it's hardship. Where, what does it happen? Don't look at it. This is not what I crafted when I sent my bill. This is my bill, sir. So it's so tedious that it will lead to anarchy, it will lead to problem and so on. Look at it again. The purpose of this, the intent of this bill, what I mean was to provide management of vehicles so you don't begin to lock people's vehicles up and down. People are parking at random. It's meant to generate fees, but not the confidence of the essence of law is to promote sanity, not to cause sanity. For me, not having driving, some of us have up to two, three for the cars or so, you put your license elsewhere. At that moment, a crazy officer will just say, you don't have no work, and you find a vehicle before you know it, they throw it. I mean, they will cost, as you are going, you are taking someone to hospital, as you know something, it will cost on two What I'm suggesting, we delete all those in front of and I have a driver, I have a Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please don't, please don't. Again. What I'm suggesting is that those impound vehicles, see a psychiatric door and so on, should be deleted. Where is the psychiatric door that Always in Item 60, item 68, item 67, item 70, the whole of, the whole of page 27, the whole of um, uh, page 26. They are all in front of their own theater as a catching doctor and so on. So are we going to now go to Bagulada to go and see a catcher? Then he will come back and say you are well. Then you come back and claim the vehicle and all what not. I mean, <laughs> but it's not about to declare the insane. And when the psychiatrist says there's something wrong with you at that moment, then you may not be able to run the election again. <laughs> you may declare the madman. You have to come back to say you are fit again. If they keep dangerous before they condemn all of us. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, uh, but they are already. Thank you very much, Mr. Shiam, on the roof of this. I was already sweating when I saw all the penalties. I don't know that my senior was talking about it. If you look at pages 21, from page 20, 21 to 22, all the penalties are double. And that's what we call double new body in, uh, in law. When you put a fine, I will say in addition, additional. For example, from number one, driving without driver's, driver's license in possession. Now say fine, 2000 additional in pound value. There are two separate punishments. You can pay the fine and it will pound the value. And nobody has stated their own. No, that, no let, let me finish there, sir. Is that must prove ownership within 24 hours? Item what? It's also very, very strange that if the owner of the vehicle, if my daughter is driving my vehicle and I'm in Lagos, or I'm out of the country, and within 24 hours I have to prove ownership. We are going to create another problem. It's like you never recall when there was this parking uh, arrangement in Abuja. When you have to park within one hour, you pay. When you are to extend it, when those people are not around, you can even they walk away. You can't even pay. When you come back, they say you have been here for five hours. Everything that has to do with this additional, additional, leave the fine there or even reduce the fine. All the clauses on the additional column will be removed. Otherwise, they are causing problems. Who define they are who have committed an offense? Let them be fine, but not additionally be found your vehicle. Please, honorable colleagues, let's do it like this. We are not debating the bill. Just go straight to the solution. Somebody, something is being put in white and white, black and white. 
the solution because why I keep referring to the remark, why I keep referring to the remark is that if you drive without the driver's license, there is a possibility that the vehicle must have been stolen. So in the remark, when they say show ownership, the ownership now will now lessen the that's that, that's it. That, that, that's the way I've been placed. You have to have one or two others who are. So if you have solution to this thing, please let us know. Don't debate the bill again. Simon. Uh, thank you, Chair. This is um, Dr. Uh, the colleague who's, who's, who sponsored uh, the bill is doing a critique of it. Let's stand down the shadow. Let us go and rework it. Thank you very much for that solution. He has provided a solution for us, Mr. Mota. No, before the sides come today, let's go. So the schedule of this meal is stand up. Yeah. You know what? Excellency Valeke, who can contribute behind the closed door when they are reconsidering the schedule now? So the schedule to this bill is uh, stood down, and uh, you make amendments. So, Dr. Bode, you bring it down. The next uh, report will be considered is that of the House Committee of Tertiary Education on the bill and now to establish the very opportunity equality in Delta State to provide full-time courses in technology, applied science, management, and other fields of study, and to make provisions for the general administration of the Polytechnic and for related matter, House Bill 1497. And I invite Chairman as Committee of Tertiary Education to speak to the report. Is he in there? Okay, your side. Are you a member of that committee or because you are a legal data man? I'm from I'm the sponsor of you. Okay, you are the sponsor of the bill. Thank you. Thank okay, you. you are welcome. Yeah, thank you. Sir. You know, when I was uh, when I brought this bill, I talked more of uh, uh, my area being one of the largest area that produces oil and gas, and at the same time, heavily prison as the federal presence uh, in my area. Additionally, my area also produces the highest uh, IPP. Nigeria today, where uh, 485 megawatts of electricity is transmitted to the nation, and yet have no lights to talk about. So, every federal constituency in Delta State have even state institutions. Only my federal constituency has no institutions at all. So, I think in the light of this, that I brought this, so that at the end of the day, the spirit of Section 14 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria is achieved. I'm able to address the concern of my people, let them have the opportunity of being educated. Because some of us left even our area to the University of Nigeria so can be educated. Not everybody has that kind of money to go very far to be educated. You will be carrying virtually the frequently facet of the committee alone in making sure that this bill is passed. Thank you, Mr. Uh, uh, speaker, and my distinguished colleagues. I believe that this bill should the report has uh, 29 clauses. Yes, but clause 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Schedule, explanatory memorandum, long title of the bill. The next report to be considered is that of the 
House Committee on that is a, it's a concurrence bill anyway, and it's from the Senate on the people are now to establish the Defense Research and Development Bureau to initiate and conduct robust research and development in the armed forces in Nigeria and for related matters. House Bill 1606. And I invite Chairman House Committee on Rules and Business to speak to the report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, honorable colleagues. This is a very important bill that has to do with the security. It is for the act to establish the Defense Research and Development Bureau to initiate and conduct robust research and development in the armed forces in Nigeria. It has that four clauses to be uh, a bureau in the defense industry. And the objectives of the bureau are clearly stated in clause two of the bill. I believe the judges of the house to consider the bill clause by clause. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, the bill, the report has 34 clauses. We therefore go ahead to pass the clauses. Clause 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34. Schedule, explanatory memorandum, long title of the bill. The next report is that of the House Committee on Road Safety on a bill for an act to repeal the Federal Road Safety Commission Establishment Act 2007 and to enact bill for an act to establish the Nigeria Road Safety Commission with responsibility for traffic administration and safety management, prevention and minimization of road traffic crashes, the supervision of users of such, such roads, the regulation of traffic down, clearing of obstruction or any part of the roads, the education of drivers, motorists, and other members of the public, generally on the proper use of the roads and for related matters, to safety on the roads, house bills 932, 939, 796, and 1328. And I invite Honorable Ni to speak to the report. Thank you, Honorable Oni. 
The report has 91 clauses. We therefore go ahead to consider the clauses. Clause 1, clause 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, Delta, Abia, Anambra, Nwokono, Lida, Prestige, Twenty two, twenty three, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty seven, twenty eight, twenty nine, thirty, thirty one, thirty two, thirty three, thirty four, thirty five, thirty six, thirty seven, thirty eight, thirty nine, forty, forty one, forty two, forty three, forty four, forty five. 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58. Fifty nine, sixty. 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76. There is no 76 in this bill. We have 75, so our 76 will not be 77. Our 77 will not be 76, rather. And it will be accordingly adjusted. There is no 76. So you, Secretary, you adjust the number. So starting from our 77 will now be 76 and it will be accordingly adjusted. 76 now, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82. Okay, there are 282. There are 282. So the first 82 will be 81. And the next 82 will be 82. I just accordingly 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88. Eighty-nine, ninety, ninety-one. First schedule, second schedule, explanatory memorandum. Long title of the bill. I jumped item 12 on the other paper and uh, I've been accordingly corrected. So we we'll go back to item 12, which is still a report of the House Committee on Tertiary Education on the beef and now to amend the University of Lagos Act. Chapter U9 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 to specify the minimum qualification of the chairman of the governing council, ownership of intellectual property, and to provide for reaction notice to the university authority and for related matters as we 1106 2017. And I invite the representative of that committee to speak to the report. It's an amendment bill. So I call on Honorable Charibe to speak to the report. Right, Honorable Chairman, my colleagues. This 
Leo seeks to amend the University of Lagos Act Cap UN U9 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 to specify the minimum qualification of the Chairman of the Governing Council ownership of intellectual property and to provide for pre action notice to the university authority and for related matters. The objective of the bill seeks to amend three sections, sections 1, 5A, 12 to insert new 2A and 21A, fourth schedule on article 9 to insert new 3A, citation and explanatory memorandum. The objectives of the bill is to specify the minimum qualification of the chairman of the governing council, ownership of intellectual property and to provide for pre-action notice to the university authority. Anyway, six sections of the principal act were sought for to be amended, and they have been accordingly amended. Some of them were retained. So, clause one, retained. Six. Section five of the principal act was sought to be amended, and is to be amended is in clause two. Section 12 of the principal act was sought to be amended and is amended and is in clause 3. Four was sought to be amended and is retained. So four. And five. We are not aware that it is retained, but it's retained. Clause 6, explanatory memorandum, not title of the bill. The next set of reports to be considered is that of the House Committee on Public Petitions, starting from 15. And I will enjoy members to, to look and to, to read their other paper. We are considering oh, some of you who still have their report. So I now call on the Chairman of the Committee on Public Petitions to, in 30 seconds, speak to one after the other. So we are on 15 now. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This is a, a report from the Committee on Public Petition and, uh, against road safety by one Eshet, Sarah Lambert, Eshet, the committee, having gone through, recommended that all the court marshal of the Federal Road Safety Commission to resist Eshet, Sarah Lambert, the service of the Federal Road Safety Commission, and place her part with her colleagues in office for the payment of areas of salary. The one that is under consideration now is that uh, it's a petition by Essex Sarah Lambert against the Federal Road Safety Commission on the wrongful termination of her appointment and approved the recommendation there. And the recommendation is urge the co marshal of the Federal Road Safety Commission to reinstate Ms. Lambert to the service of the Federal Road Safety Commission and place her at par with her colleagues in office without payment or alias of salary carry. The next one is still that of House Committee of Public Petition on the petition by Sule Sani Ibrahim Kazauri against the Corporate Affairs Commission on unlawful and unjust termination of his appointment. I approve the recommendation there. So, Chairman Public Petition. 37. Thank you. This is a petition against public, uh, sorry, against Corporate Affairs Commission by one Kazure. Uh, and uh, we looked at the matter and also uh, the sister was very, very wrongful and the party from the date he was moved to the date. Therefore, we had the two commissions to take him back to work and then um, cause him to pay all the salaries and entitlements from the date he was dismissed from service. That report 
cast to recommendation. Recommendation one, call it. Two, call it. Third one is that still the House of Com House Committee on Public Petition on the petition by Saleh Sabu O against the Nigerian Customs Service on the strong dismissal from service in 2005 and approve the recommendation there. So, Chairman, public petition. This is Zito against the Nigerian Customs and um, by one Sabehu Sabo who looked at the matter and prayed uh, that he be respected by Nigerian Customs and paid what entitlement and benefits without further delay. The report has one recommendation and the recommendation is approved. The next report is still that of House Committee on Public Petition on petition by Ibrahim Muhammad Rahabi against the Nigerian Air Force on the strong good dismissal from service and approved the recommendation there. So Chairman House Committee on Public Petition, speak to the report please. by one uh, Ibrahim Mohamed Rabiu against the Nigerian uh, defense to look at the matter and said, urge the Minister of Defense to direct the Chief of Air Staff to follow the process and combat Mr. Ibrahim Mohamed Rabiu dismissal to propose retirement to enable him to apply for the best we are to that the management of the Air Force should pay him all the entitlement and retirement benefits to enable him to start a new life. The report has two recommendations. Recommendation one. Two. The next report is still that of House Committee on Public Petition on the petition by Michael Afilaka, Gabriel Okon, Hangi Taylor, and others against the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports on the non payment of the Nigeria High Performance Salary and Agreed Entitlements and approve the recommendation there. Chairman, ask committee of public petition, speak to the report, please. Uh, Dito, who was the Minister of Sports and um, it is a petition by one Michael Abdullah Gabriel Ocon and the rest of them against the Ministry of Sports and Culture. In fact, they are very uh, habitually not being uh, able to engage. So, all the Director General National. National Sports Commission in connection with the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports to ensure the full payment of 10 months areas of salary strength and all over to Michael Flag and Gabriel Ocon and Hill and order according to uh, contract terms between both parties within the shortest possible time. The report has one recommendation and the, the recommendation is accordingly approved. Carried. The next report is still that of House Committee on Public Petition. On petition by Paul Isirim, a bomba and family against the Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria Limited, alleging injustice and a call for intervention and approved the recommendation there. I have a call on Chairman House Committee on Public Petition to speak to the report. The matter involving um, a particular family with the Shell Company, they had entered into an agreement long ago before even the civil war and had agreed that the agreement was subject to periodical review of the payment of rent at the acreage and uh, part of the agreement was that um, the current uh value of the value be used in the negotiation but they see since after the war the people refused to sit down with them to negotiate so we looked at the agreement and looked at the paper in and then made the first suggestion that uh, uh, containing trade that the house urged the shape them to come to the terms of the new value of the land to negotiate with them and they, that they should also obey the judgment of the River State High Court in favor of the family uh, and the legal landlord of which we feel and the trade that the company should also engage the family in its surveillance and other minor contracts at the beginning. Thank you, Chairman. The report has three recommendations. Recommendation one, two, three. The next is still that of House Committee on Public Petition on the, pet on the petition by X. Warrant Officer, is it? 
WC PC Comfort Johanna against the Nigerian Police Force. Oh. On appeal for a restatement to the service and approve the recommendation here. What is WC slash PC? Woman Cobra. How does the P now come into it? Okay. Woman Police Cobra. Okay. I thought it's what I told me, sir. So, Chairman, has come committee of public petition, please. Thank you. Uh, this is also a matter against the police um, for wrongful dismissal. Uh, at the end of it, we came to the conclusion uh, that they be uh, reinstated. But we have uh, a copy mix up here because one of them petitioned. Nobody petitioned. But there were four, and the federal three did not really uh, canvass for this matter. And at the end of it, they said that the men who fought on this matter ought to be uh, uh, given all the attachment. But those who were sitting by and did not bother, who merely benefited from that, who had found some other thing, they were doing within that period. And that was said, uh, would have been meant to apply what it should have been. The man, the first lady who fought, who, come, who said, I won't do another job, you instead me, and proved all her rights, who said, ought to have been coffee. Uh, slides and all whatnot. But there are three who went to the way to say, let's look for uh, something to do, but now who sought to benefit from the work of the data of asset without payment. So I think you'll be able to do uh, the amendment. It does not start as what we well agree. And the person who brought the petition, who can pass for it, with the matter, uh, have done nothing to that period. So that should be restated and made. So the exclusion for the statement, if they so desire to go back on that slide, is that three who stood by and did not complain about that. I thank you for the Chairman. Chairman. Yes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my colleague, I, I presented this petition. And I know as a fact that the petition concerns only one person. That's, that is even the reason why you even see the, the heading of the report. The other ones that um, we are trying to capture in this recommendation, I don't know anything about them. Yes, so I think yeah, we ought to amend the, uh, the recommendations. My prayer is that I move a motion that we amend the recommendation to read thus. All the Nigeria police force to reinstate X, W slash PC Comfort Johanna and pay her all her salaries and entitlement from the date of dismissal and stop them. Uh, before we second it, let's give the chairman opportunity to say something about it. If it is true that the two orders were not part of the petition and it clearly shown from the title of the petition, then we have to be very careful. So chairman, let, let me, I'm not preempting you. Let me explain. The, the petition came in respect of Johanna. In doing the matter, Johanna was involved with other people. Was involved. The matter who involved other people, other three other persons. But Johanna alone came to do the matter. While we are taking evidence, we said, what happened? Finally, the other three persons were affected in the manner Johanna did. Johanna had the whole thing, the, 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 the favor to come with the petition. And we found out that what was applicable to Johanna was applicable to the other three. However, only Johanna, excuse me, let me come. For example, the Asians we don't did before this time, they were three in number. They said they, they claimed they committed the offense or whatever. One came and appealed that petition. Today he's a commander. The other one now, who said, I had no money to come to the appeal to fully talk. But when I saw this opportunity that the house is now working, I decided to come to the house to do it. Are we going to say you will not benefit? So the thing now is that I would now say these three, you stood by, you are thrown away, you took it, you said, let God help you, and went to God. After you know that thing, you didn't bother, you were meaningfully engaged then. This other fellow came and said, I will fight my mother, and she did the matter, and got successful. And then I said, well, Pay her or whatnot, but this are you have option because of uh, you can still come, but you get no pay. But if you still want to work, uh, come, but you get no pay. That was why. So I'm in agreement that we should rephrase it that Joanna should 
get um, employed back and pay. But rather than you cannot come back, but without pay, but start from where they begin again. It will be unfair for us to say because. Yeah, the Honorable Abota, your arguments, your arguments will look reasonable if you consider it the surface. But uh, you know, as a lawyer, you know how important it is when you are not joined in a case. Yeah, but they came now. Yeah, when we are doing the matter, they, they were not the one who got stopped. But what you would have advised them? In case of the matter, what, we have But they please just wait. What you would have advised them that time was why the thing was going on. They would have brought a petition, you present. Then to be filed accordingly. So sit down. So the chair, chair, sir. If I may explain further, that is what you have done. If I may explain further, sir. In case of the petition, we no, we do ourselves a lot of injustice. If their own name did not pass through the normal procedure of the house and suddenly appeared in a report, so no, that that is not the that is. I will give I will give to other people who are equally lawyers too. And in fact, I'm lucky this afternoon. There are so many of them on the floor. Dr. Bode will speak, Professor Majid will speak. If Lawa lies, he can also speak. But I don't think it is proper for us now because they were not joined initially and their names were conspicuously not there on the, even from the title of the petition itself. So you could have advised them, you could have used your power of attorney to secretly advise them to bring a petition, you come and they have fast track it. And even delay the hearing of the one that was properly uh, presented. So, Honorable Abota, if you spend the next 24 hours, yes. that thing cannot pass. Mr. Chairman, honorable colleagues, I want to plead that the chairman will not present to the arena of argument and preside over this matter. Sir, the committee of petitions is not a law court, it's an arbitrative panel. It's more of reconciliation arbitration. And whoever matter petition, it is the cause of justice that matter. Irrespective of all, the fact that only one person has petition, if the committee has said that the injustice has been done to three or four people, we are not in court. They don't have to. The others don't have to petition. I'm also surprised that my learned colleague is insisting that the report, the, the recommendation should stop at the petitioner alone. I haven't spoken, and I know my learned colleague will withdraw his motion as a lawyer. Whoever matter petition, the committee is at liberty to look at the case holistically and apply justice to all that have been wronged. This parliament, we are not in court. They were not in court. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I I beg to disagree with my learned brother. The first thing is, what is the status of the House Committee on Public Petition? It is a quasi-judicial institution. And you know, as I do, that administrative institution exercising quasi-judicial powers must respect the principles of fair hearing. They must op operate like a court. And that is why their decisions are brought to the House. Secondly, a, 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 a tribunal, exercising such power, does not grant anything gratuitously. You grant only what is asked for. Even for, for many of us who are uh, used to election petition, when something is granted, they will tell you you didn't ask for it. The, the, the court of law and any judicial, any administrative tribunal exercising the power of a tribunal cannot grant anything gratuitously. And to that extent, and thirdly, uh, Mr. Chairman, it is like coming through the back door, which this house should not allow. Otherwise, are we saying once the panel makes its decision, Anybody can then come out from anywhere in the world and say, oh, the house has taken that decision. I'm also affected. So join me. I'm also affected. So join me. To do so would be to leave bad business. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. No, sit down. No, just, just take, take, take time. Oh, yeah, now I, you have to speak before the confusion gets to you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I, I think, uh, in my view, uh, public petition is a constitution. And uh, when
when they are exercising that, when the chairman is sitting, it's not deemed to observe all technicalities. However, it should be seen to apply equity and fairness in reaching a just decision. If by joining these parties, certainly he will reach a just decision. I think so be it. But uh, if by joining the parties, then he will reach a wrong decision, I think uh, that will not serve the purpose. Thank you very much. Uh, I don't want to prophesy wrongly. If we're talking to his students, let us go and look at the reference of position. We are not bound by technical. That is why a matter that is um, uh, uh, out of uh, 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 time, we hear it. We can't be started back. We don't. If it's more than three years, we don't have a proof. If it's 100 years, we have a proof. We hear it. Committee and politician will not do justice, we do equity. We want to find fair. How can you say that four persons were involved in one particular transaction that is bad? One had the bullet to come say, this is my faith, I will not agree. They had to say, to left and forgot. When we're here, we we'll call all of them and say, come. And they appear before you and tell their matter and put their claim and say, you only consider one, you not do others. The point is, if it is the justice of the matter of looking at the three who are just, the parliament will do that. We are parliament and not court. The parliament will go out of their way. One person can complain what affects 100 persons. If it's true, but in this case, there are particular TV persons known. So it's not the whole round of everyone to come and say no. His concern is he came to petition for one person. In the course of hearing the evidence had that person suffered. Before that, that three other persons suffered. The same thing. But because they said we had no money to come, not everybody even knows this opportunity. In the one of those safety, he said, I don't come back. Okay, I've listened to you. Are we going to do a structure? Just, to just take your seat. Uh, uh, Simon, to lose? nicely. What will we lose if Please. we consider the three? We are not losing anything. Just sit down. Uh, Honorable uh, Simon Arambo. Yes. Um, if that is the line you're throwing, that prayer is never. Who are the three orders? Who are the three orders? That's right, that's right. So, if you are able, to, if you are, if you are going to be able to give the particulars of those three orders, then let us segment the prayers. We want to add them, five, but to join one prayer on those three people, some of what we know, and that's why I'm proposing an amendment. Yes, my amendment. Let, let me rule. You have proposed an amendment. Let me rule. First and foremost, yes, I always I always want to listen to lawyers. Well, from the point of the fact that you either educate us or confuse us the more. No, don't, don't confuse me. Now, let me know the one that I know very well, which is the one I'm doing now. But they started very wrongly. You first of all rebuked me by saying I descended to. You have forgotten the fact. You have forgotten the fact that anything that has to do with the of representation, I'm stating the fact now, and it's not a laughing matter. Any matter that has to do with us of representatives in terms of, of correspondence must first of all be addressed to the speaker. That is the beginning of anything that you have to treat yes. within the context of this parliament. Yeah, right. So anything that was done is uh, something that is not addressed to the speaker of the house. And you say you treated it behind the, and you say I descended to the uh, uh, arena of argument. What is it? So this petition was laid in the chamber addressed to the speaker. Speaker directed House Committee of Public Petition, go and treat. So the one that you are joining, who was he addressed to? So, no, 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 no. If they come, if they came to give that in the record of the house, where will it appear that they actually approached the house for, for, for certain things? So it's wrong. So you, you, you just rose up, spoke with, uh, as a lawyer, with a lot of bad emotion. This thing was not addressed to the house. Joanna addressed her petition to the house. The speaker directed the House of Committee of Public Petition to go and treat. And that is what in our and that is what we treat. And so, unlike uh, Simon Larabo said, who are the three others? In the record of the house now, 
the three others you are talking about is not appearing anywhere. Or the clerk of the house, you have a record of the three others. So once you don't have a record of three others, if you go to the outside of the house, where is the record of three others? Where is it? So charm out some business next time. Be careful, let's don't let be emotional about uh, all these things. It's not fair. So Simon has moved a motion to to amend and the goni, you second the motion that we take. Uru. My name is Ono Mr. Chairman, my very respected colleagues. My name is Ono Goni Bukarlawan, member representing Musari, Gaidami Musari. I'm from Yobe State. I rise to second amendment made by Ono. I saw second. Those in favor of the amendment say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The eyes have it. So the recommendation is approved. This is the last report to be considered is still that of House Committee on Public Petition on the petition by Emmanuel Yeke and Associates against the Nigerian Customs Service on illegal, unlawful, and unwarranted destruction of means of livelihood. Livelihood of Mr. Christian Fidelis Uto and approve the recommendation there. Chairman, House Committee on Public Petition, speak to the report, please. That's a House Committee on Public Petition report against customs. We looked at it and then the old Nigerian customs to replace the Christian. This report has just one recommendation, and the recommendation is approved accordingly. Leader. Mr. Chairman, the Court is that I have to do that plan to report progress. Chairman, I rose business. Thank you, Chairman, and honorable colleagues. Arise the second motion to be moved by the leader of the House. House, you have a back to plenary to report progress. The House in the Committee of the Whole consider the report on the Bill for NAC to establish the Nigeria Independent Warehouse Regulatory Agency and for related matters and approve clauses 1 to 105, the scheduled the explanatory memorandum and the long title of the bill. The House in the Committee of the Whole consider the report on the Bill for NAC to provide for suppression of piracy and other maritime offenses, give effect to the provision of the United Nations Convention on the law of the sea, 1982, the Convention for the Suppression of Unlawful Act Against the Safety of Maritime Navigation, 1988, and its protocols and for related matters, and approve clauses 1 to 23, the explanatory memorandum and long title of the bill. The House in the Committee of the Whole consider the report on a beef and act to establish the Counseling Practitioner Council of Nigeria to conduct qualified examinations regulate the counseling profession and for related matters and approve clauses 1 to 19, the schedules, the explanatory memorandum and long title of the bill. The House in the Committee of the Whole consider the report on the bill for that to establish the Federal Capital Territory FCT Directorate of Road, Tra Road Traffic and Motor Vehicle Administration Service to be scheduled with responsibility of road traffic management and motor vehicle administration services within the Federal Capital Territory FCT and for related matters. Approved clauses 1 to 29, the far concentration of the schedules, approved the explanatory memorandum and the long title of the bill. The House in the Committee of the Whole considered the report on the bill for now to establish the Federal Polytechnic Equality in Delta State to provide full-time courses in technology, applied science, management and other fields of studies 
and to make provision for general administration of, of the polytechnic and for related matters and approve clauses 1 to 29, the schedule, the explanatory memorandum and the long title of the bill. The House in the Committee of the Whole consider the report on the bill for an act to provide for establishment of the Defense Research and Development Bureau and for related matters and approve clauses 1 to 34, the schedule, the explanatory memorandum and the long title of the bill. The House in the Committee of the Whole consider the report of the Committee on Tertiary Education and Services on the bill for an act to amend the University of Lagos Act Chapter U9 Laws of the Federation of Nigeria 2004 to specify the minimum qualification for the chairman of the governing council, ownership of intellectual property, and to provide for pre action notice to the university authority and for related matters and approve clauses 1 to 6 of the bill, the explanatory memorandum, and the long title of the bill. The House in the Committee of the Whole consider the report of the Committee on Federal Road Safety Commission on the bill for an act to repeal the Federal Road Safety Commission Establishment Act 2007 and enact a bill for an act to establish the Nigerian Road Safety Commission with responsibility for traffic management, prevention and minimization of road traffic crashes, supervision of users of such roads, regulation of traffic thereon, clearing of obstruction on any part of the roads, education of drivers, motorists and other members of the general public, on the proper use of the roads and for related matters and approve clauses 1 to 89, the schedules, the explanatory memorandum and the long title of the bill. The House in the Committee of the Whole consider the report of the Committee on Public Petitions on the petition by S.S. Sarah Lambert against the Federal Road Safety Commission on the wrongful termination of her appointment and approve the recommendation therein. The House, in the Committee of the Whole, consider the report of the Committee on Public Petitions on the petition by Sule Saleh Ibrahim Kazawri against the Corporate Affairs Commission on unlawful and unjust termination of his appointment and approve the recommendation therein. The House, in the Committee of the Whole, consider the report of the Committee on Public Petition on the petition by Saleh Usabu O against the Nigerian Customs Service on the strong full dismissal from service in 2005 and approved the only recommendation therein. The House in the Committee of the Whole considered the report of the Committee on Public Petitions on the petition by Ibrahim Mohamed Rabi against the Nigerian Air Force on the wrongful dismissal from service and approved recommendation 1 and 2 therein. The House in the Committee of the Whole considered the report of the Committee on Public Petitions on the petition by Mick Michael Afilaka, Gabriel Okon, Hanky Taylor, and others against the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports on non payments of the Nigeria High Performance Salary and Agreement Entitlements and approved the only recommendation therein. The House in the Committee of the Whole considered the report of the Committee on Public Petition on the petition by Paul Ezirim Ebomba and family against Shell Petroleum Development Company of Nigeria Limited, alleging injustice and a call for intervention and approve recommendation 1, 2, and 3 therein. The House in the Committee of the Whole considered the report of the Committee on Public Petition on the petition by ex woman Police Cobra Comfort Joanna against the Nigeria Police on appeal for reinstatement to the service and approve the only recommendation therein as amended. The House in the Committee of the Whole consider the report of the Committee on Public Petition on the petition by Emmanuel Yeke and Associates against the Nigerian Customs Service on illegal, unlawful, and unwarranted destruction of means of livelihood of Mr. Christian Fidelis Udo and approve the only recommendation therein. Leader. And I don't want to speak as well as fellow colleagues. I'd like to move that the House will adopt the, the board of the committee uh, of the board as well. Chairman, please. Thank you, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, Honorable Colleagues. I rise to second the motion. Maybe move by the leader of the House. Those in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Those against say nay. The ayes have it.
Mbira. Right now, the speaker, Respect College, I rise to move that the house will adjourn to Tuesday 13th, uh, no, no, 38, 2019, 11 a.m. Chairman, rules of business. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, honorable colleagues. I rise to second the motion of adjournment. Maybe move by the leader of the House. The House stands adjourned the 30th of April 2019, 11 a.m.